There's no such thing as absolute freedom. Freedom is always constraint in some way. Your body is a constraint to your existence. Your talents are constraints to your existence. So in order to be free, you work within the framework that you've been given. Dyslexia didn't really exist in the 70s and the 80s. Coming from primary school, I really fell very far behind. But somehow I got into the school as an act of charity, I suppose. But some of the teachers were pretty heavy handed. I mean, you just didn't want to be there. That's why I spent a lot of the time on the streets or down the woods or up the mountains. get away from the oppressive system which I didn't fit into. So I would do cartoons of the teachers, sketches and portraits just to keep my mind ticking over and getting through the 40 minutes of the class. Drawing became uh, a matter of survival, a way of being, essentially. And later on, that way of being became a way of contemplating and entering into deeper aspects of my personality as I matured as a person. In sculpture, you have this, uh, this necessity to synthesize everything into one object. All the meaning, all the presence, all the power has to be within one form. I love the humility of clay, that you can transform a piece of mud into a magnificent mystical image. Andrei Tarkovsky talks about the artist as a priesthood and your sacrament is beauty. It's a revelation of what it means to be. know thyself. But once you understand yourself, then you can move into a whole new understanding of your time. Understand who you are in the context of history, in the context of culture, in the context of time and space. Understanding who we are is fundamental to understanding what we should be doing and how we should be. Art galleries no longer celebrate beauty, but they celebrate ugliness and despair. That's why I spend so much time delving into the history of art. 
And by doing that, you, you kind of bridge the gap across the ages. To really listen to the culture, listen to the time, and listen to history, and then connect. Once I learned artistic anatomy as a grammar, I could dialogue directly with Michelangelo, Bernini, all the great masters. The body is the most beautiful form in existence, the essential form of the bone. Complemented by the essential form of the musculature. You start to see where the science finishes and the spiritual or the mystical starts. So I would use that analysis of the human body in a scientific way to study a mystical work. to make visible what's invisible. To be in awe of the mystery and beauty of what's happening right now. Just looking at that window, looking at those trees, looking at the wind blow. This is a golden moment. And this is happening all the time in every inch of the globe. The artist's vocation is to actually recognize that and have that awe, that childlike awe of the beauty, truth and goodness of existence. I feel uh, freedom, total liberation. But at the same time, when I look at my life, I think freedom really exists within the mastering of what you've been given. When we use our freedom to do what is wrong and hurtful, we find ourselves a slave to our nature. Freedom, essentially, I think, is the freedom to love. 